that's a pleasant enough start screen. So welcome to Rethink. What? Hang on, what? I hate, I... Is this Rethink? I, I so I, I... <laughs> I hate... Okay, now it's playing the Steam Pages video. I hate this franchise's naming scheme so much, and I didn't, and I was about to talk about that, but I didn't realize it would rear its head up again. But it is. Okay, so here's an issue. This game doesn't say what the name of the game is anywhere on the screen right now. But <laughs> out my other screen, I can see the the task bar on the bottom of the screen, right? Like you know, on Windows, and. There, it's called Rethink 2. So, the executable that I'm running right now, like, on the taskbar is called Rethink 2, but I launched it via the Rethink 1 page. But, like, I, let's go on, because I was, I was going to talk about this anyway. This game, this franchise, is, so it's, it's like Portal a little bit, and then it's like, you know, you're in test chambers solving puzzles, like in Portal and Cube and everything like that. I, I, felt, I, was, I felt like playing a test chamber puzzle game next, so I figured I'd do this one finally. I have all four games, so let's, uh, I don't know if we'll do them back to back or what, but uh, their naming scheme is awful. So their naming scheme, here's the game, here's the four games in order. Rethink. Rethink Evolved. So already you're confused, like, is it a sequel or is it a remake? Or did they, like, did they, did they reimagine the first game or did they make a sequel to it? Okay, but sure, okay. Third game is Rethink Evolved 2. And you're like, excuse me? So I guess it's like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2? Like it's a sequel to the the new subtitle of the franchise? Like you 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 would think that the you would think that Rethink Evolved was was Rethink 2. And so you think that Rethink the 3 would have a different title or something, but no, it's Rethink Evolved 2. And you're like, okay, that's confusing, but okay. That, then they got then they reached peak confusing, which is they made a fourth game called Rethink 2. <laughs> so the four games are Rethink, Rethink Evolved, Rethink Evolved 2, and Rethink 2. That's the order of the games so far, at least by release dates. So now it's still confusing because you would like we live in a world where there's like Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light, and then Metro, then there's like re-releases that are remasters of both of those games that are not sequels to them, like that kind of thing. Like this game, they made a game, and then they made a subtitle sequel to the game, then they made a sequel to that subtitle, then they made a sequel to the original name of the original game. And I'm like, I, what do these numbers mean? Uh, as far as I can tell, they are four separate games, and that is their order. I think that the middle ones are called Evolved because it like has some kind of mechanical difference compared to the normal Rethink games, but it's just a nightmare from a naming scheme. And like, as far as like indie games fighting for audience attention and trying to advertise themselves to potential buyers and stuff like that, uh, this level of brand confusion is probably not a good idea. But oh well. But it's extra confusing when I play Rethink and when I launch it, the executable has a little Unreal logo. Um, like my like right now my title bar has the Unreal logo, and then it says Rethink Two, and I'm like, no, this I decided this is not Rethink Two. It better not be because it's because what I got from the store page from Rethink One. I don't know what things mean. In the year 2075, inmates of government-controlled correctional facilities have the. All right, there goes the lore. Goodbye. It left without me. So, WASD spacebar left shift. To walk, jump, and run. That's interesting. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen them like say all of them in a row like that before, but it's not that hard to keep track of, so it's fine. It's the default ones, more or less. Look at that landscape. It's a pretty enough game. It's the kind of minimal, like, hyper-clean environment that a lot of games go with. It's actually kind of off-putting, generally speaking. Like, it, like in real life, it'd be like, eh, this place feels like it's got sinister plans for me or something. Like it's a dystopian hell. But uh, in a video game test, if you're going to do test chambers in a puzzle video game, this kind of environment's pretty, 
standard. And it sets the stage for what to expect to some extent. I swear to God, this better not be Rethink 2. Because, <laughs> like, I can't get over the fact that it says that... My computer literally says this game is Rethink 2, which is the fourth game. But it's the f but I launched it via the first game store page, so I can't be wrong, can it? <laughs> I'm genuinely second guessing it so much. Left mouse button, right mouse button, mouse wheel up, mouse wheel down. This. Okay, this is a weird way to do a tutorial. Uh, to activate and deactivate and rotate cubes. By default, this also switches between cubes if you are not looking at a cube. Left, right, and mouse wheel. I'll just intuit it, it's fine. It's for activating, deactivating, and rotating, so... Wait, rotating or switching? Or, that's not a cube, I guess. Laser hurt? Laser does not hurt, okay. How do I activate and deactivate cubes? Let's see, let's watch a little cutscene. Oh, activate. And... Oh, this is the only spot I can interact with. Okay, that's why I couldn't find responses. So left click brings it up, right click brings it down. And then mouse wheel rotates it, and now the door's open. There we go. So yeah, this is... Oh, this is pretty certainly gonna be a... One of those laser puzzle games. We'll get ready for that. That wall is clearly going to be useless to me, so let's not make it go that way. There we go. Look down there. This will probably be a, a mellow, kind of chill walkabout game. Why are you blinking? Why are you blinking? You're weirding me out with your blinking. So I want you to go here, so let's have you face... See... Is that source? then go that way, I think? I think that's the way that it works. So I want you to go that way. Can't make this one go up? I see what's happening here. On the bottom of the screen, I have a currency of how many I can use. So instead of here, I want to go this way. So if I go this way, I'll use fewer cubes, which allows me to get there. That's the idea. What, what's going on there? there? Okay. So here's the door I want to go through, and I need to keep this thing beamed up. What's actually happening is that this guy and the other guy are taking turns. They're alternating which one of them has light coming at them. So in order to have this thing continuously put out light, I need to somehow redirect both of these beams into this thing, I guess? Is the idea. Interesting. So I can't rotate you. Right? Yeah. I can rotate you, but what do I do with that? You're shooting through this way. Oh, that's what I need to do. Okay. Not you. This take they take turns shooting through here. I have one remaining currency, so I can make one of these come up and shoot that way. And now they'll both be shooting through here. So they take turns, and now the door will open. Got it. Just had to assess the uh, environment there. Take stock of what I have. So this is going to be a uh, okay. So this will be a reoccurring thing. Alternating lights where I need to make every light have a continuous path to a specific location so that the door actually stays open So this time we're trying to make them go here 
and I need to direct this light and that other light to both go there. Okay. I'm thinking, oh, maybe not you. There's no... Maybe that one, technically. I would think this one. Like, I think working backwards is probably the way to go. So this is pointing at that. And then this is probably how I'll get them to go there. Point you there. You go over here, though, so that's, that's interesting. I'm thinking we direct you over at that guy. And then you point at that guy. And you can't point there, but you can point uh, the trees in the way. This tree, why does it fuck me? Okay, so trees in the way. It ruins the entire puzzle. R.I.P. And if I redirect this way, we don't reach... There's no more things on the ground around here. Hmm. Maybe I do want to go this way then. Or is the tree in the way? The tree's in the way. Oh, these trees are evil. Okay. That can make it past the trees. Let's redirect you back to here then. We're gonna go in the exact opposite direction of what I originally planned, I think. To go around this way. I have one more left, which should be exactly as many as I need. Yeah, got it. Number five. This is chill. It almost makes up for the confusing anxiety of its bizarre naming scheme. <laughs> so I have six. Which should be enough. Oops. To simply have one on each side. Definitely reminding me of that Magic School Bus episode. Am I out? No, I shouldn't be out. Oh, I had accidentally mouse wheeled onto the red V. So it wasn't working. Whoops. So red to blue, red to red, green to green, blue to blue, we're good. Right? Is our laser emitter. I don't know, I should not just default to trying that. I don't know where I'm gonna go with this yet. Oh god, I have 15 to work with. Okay. Let's find where the red receiver is, since I have the emitter right here. Wait. Oh god, you're right here, okay. So I need a way to redirect you to here. You don't line up with that, so that's not very useful. That lines up with that. But what I do from there... If you go there, to there, to there, to there, to there, that, that's five. No, one, two, th that's, that's four beams. Four redirectors. I don't know if that's a good use, but I do have 15 to work with, so it might be reasonable. This seems like a bit much. The plan, the path feels inefficient, but that's, you know, the puzzle. All right, so I've used four for the red. Let's see what I can do with green and blue and whether or not I need to find a more efficient path or not. Because this will be a thing where, like, first I'll, I'll come up with paths for each solution, and then I need to worry about is the path I found sufficiently... Is, is the path I found efficient enough? Because if it's not, then I'm screwed. Alright, so that one can't work, so it has to be that one. That's the only one in line of sight. I right, mouse wheeled again. It's gonna mess me up a lot. So you have to be the one. Which means you have to be the one, because you're the only one that can see it. Oh, we're gonna go about in a crazy path then, huh? Alright. I think we have to go all the way around like this. So this is a, a resource intensive path.
That was a lot. All right, so now I'm down to four, which is which is how many I used on the red, so maybe green will be fine. But if I get to green and I can't solve it in four, then that means I need to go back to either the red or blue and find an efficiency increase somewhere. That'll be the... That'll be apparently the probably like the core of what the puzzles are like in this game. How the hell? Alright, uh... I guess it's you, right? Shoot you that way? From... Oh, over there. I see. We got it? We got it? I think we've got it. Oh, that's a little unsatisfying that it doesn't stop in the... in the thing that it's powering. That Oh, that, that's probably important, though. So right, right now it looks sloppy and weird, but there might be multiple of one color later on, and so being able to have them go through is probably an important mechanic to be aware of. It's just a little unsatisfying to watch the beam weirdly just end arbitrarily in, in not the goal. 14, huh? Okay. So same as before, but instead of 6, they give, they've given me 14, which means the path must be crazy. I think at the moment I'm going to stick to my current strategy of reverse engineering the solutions. Uh, yeah, there's nothing, nothing in this direction. This one's kind of in the right spot, but, uh, the tree probably stops it. So I probably need to go from these paths. So these two line up with red and blue. Green has three options. So solving the other ones first probably gives me a better idea what to do. This path's not great because the tree's in the way, so I'd have to redirect through that stuff, which might cause some other mess. I mean, I guess I have to, though. Hmm. Let's start with blue. Let's figure you out. So one of you can redirect to there. Maybe that one? So let's shoot blue that way. The blue is currently making it to its goal. I have, I'm down to 9 from 14, but I used one for, yeah, there's a red one over there, so I've used 4 for blue. Let's figure out your path. So, it would pretty much have to be this guy. Oh, I mouse wheeled again. I keep accidentally unselecting the one I need to use. So that kind of leaves this guy for green. Can I find a path for that? I think so. If that's going to be green. It has to be able to shoot from there. Ooh. Through process of elimination, I suppose. There's green going to its goal, I think. Yeah. So I've got three to use for red remaining. I'm already using three. Red's the resource intensive one this time, it looks like. That goes that way. I only have one remaining, but I think that's all I need. Right? Yeah, I saw you light up. There we go. It's neat to look at. So far, not a ton of problem solving when I make the solution. Kind of just... A little pay by numbers, like you're kind of reverse engineering the level uh, layout into a solution a little bit. Purple. Ah. Is it color blending time? I think it's color blending time. Somewhat inevitably, right? Can I just keep going? What's the deal with this level design? Can I just go? 
Or is there a door closed eventually? There it is. Okay. I wasn't sure. Because it might be non-linear or something. Huh. So you're currently shooting through this. I think they're setting me up to solve this pretty easily, right? There we go. So red, so red and green makes yellow. Solves that. And then green set. Now I need to mix red and blue to make purple. And blue's also already shooting through there, so that's that's also kind of set up. This is probably border. This is probably basically a tutorial. So they make it so you, it's basically mandatory to discover the blending while you're doing it. There we go. Gonna have to memorize that a little bit. So we're dealing with RGB, where like the, the the colors I'm used to thinking of are red, yellow, blue for blending, but we're using green. So I gotta think of like red and green makes yellow. Oh God. One, two, three, four, five, six, mouse wheel up, mouse wheel down, switches between cubes. Existing cubes can be replaced without the need to deactivate them. Hmm. Oh, they're saying, they're saying that if I highlight red and click on where a, where, a, where a yellow currently is, then it'll just replace it on the spot. That's what they're saying. Yeah, okay. I need to figure out what this new one does. Let's try that. Ah, uh, yeah. Interesting. Oh, put you away. Let's try this somewhere where it's less ambiguous what you're doing. Okay. At first I thought the beam kept going, but that was the fact that the blue was shooting into the back of it. So it looked like the beam, beam kept keeps going, but no, it shoots. It just shoots out in two diagonal directions instead of one linear direction. All right. That's actually probably what I, I want to do, huh? Oh yeah, definitely. There's two greens out there for you to put them into. Huh. Maybe not so definitely. There's four greens? Kind of a lot. What kind of mess are you gonna get into if I put you here? Oh yeah, just... Right. RGB is combining into white light. Just too much. That level of blending does not lead to the solution we want. Okay. Hmm. A little crazy. So green and red is yellow, so that this this is yeah, this is cyan or teal, it's green and blue. There is no red or blue receiver. It's interesting. So based on that, we probably want to do oops. Probably just want to send you guys straight through these two. And then now I need to figure out how to Split green. Looks like there are diagonal re receivers over there, so... Go like this, then send them down. Gotcha. I definitely feel like there should be more of a victory. When I solve something, the game doesn't even really make a sound, necessarily. I think I have heard a you've done it sound once or twice, but it's definitely not like a... It's not the impact you get when you open a door in a lot of, in a lot of other games. There's, there's not much of a victory chime or a fanfare. And if, there, if, it is, if it even is making a sound, I don't even hear it half the time. I think it makes a sound... It probably makes a localized sound from the location that the door is at. And so if you're far away from the door, you just don't hear anything. And you have to check to see if you did anything. So it kind of robs you of some of the satisfaction. 
All right, this one looks crazy. So chamber 10, I have nine of this beam, one of the other one. This is a white one, so they all have to come here collectively. I have a lot of sources. I have three of each source color. Does this floor mean anything? I think it's just an outline. All right, so I have three of each. Okay, let's check upstairs, see what's up there. I have even more, don't I? Oh my god. <laughs> two blues, two reds, and a green up here. It's a bit comical. Okay. Up here is two white receivers. Hmm. So I, I can compartmentalize this a little bit, right? Like, as of right now, there's no way to change floors with light. So I think everything that I do up here has to be up here. So I need to redirect green and blue both into this thing. Okay, so let's send you. There's one. This, will, this might be the location of the other one, or it might be this one bit down, down here. But you, the green's going into this guy. I'm pretty sure I need this. Which means this must be the one I use for down here. There we go. Because that I have two blue, two red, one green. So the green has to be split. So between these two floors, this is the one place I use the splitter, I think. So now I need to get a blue to go into there, and I need to get a red to go into there. No, I need to get a green to go in- oh, I need the green has to be- oh. Hmm. No. There we go. Yeah, I was thinking I'd move it from there to there, but then this guy was only going to go through here and there and I couldn't redirect the beam backwards or anything to get it into the thing because that would be blocking the exit path. So that had to be the forward. I just had I just had to put this here to redirect the green into that one. It was already it was otherwise all set up. So now you are missing a blue. Uh, that's a problem. Oh, the blue is pointing directly into you, so I don't need that. You're the side that needs the blue redirected. There we go. Alright, so both of the whites are set up. But now I'm down to only six beams. So can I solve the downstairs floor with six beams, or do I have an efficiency problem to fix? And there's a lot to parse here. So you need blue and green. That's one way to do it, is just redirect a blue and, and green junction to there. Uses two cubes. If I keep it up at a rate of two for each, then we keep then we're fine. Because we have six. That's green and red. That's red and blue. I keep mouse wheeling on accident and unselecting the block I can use. There we go. That wasn't hard. I think I need to run all the way around now. Thankfully, I don't. there's no trial and error in being able to tell whether or not you finished the puzzle. Because there is a nice little symbol at the bottom right corner that tells you you're at 5 out of 5. So even if you don't get to hear a proper victory sound or something, at least... In the corner, it's telling you that you've won, but a sound would be nice. I just think of like all those nice, satisfying sounds that the witness makes when you solve both the panel puzzles and the environmental puzzles. Like they just make, they just know to make a nice, strong victory sound of some sort. 
So five this time. Red's right there. I mean, this has to be the red one because it's the only redirector. And it has to face... Huh. So if it points this way, we, it goes into a tree. If it points that way, it goes into a wall. And if it points this way, it goes through the green, which also means not doing it. Okay. Is there, not, there must be another red, right? Like that one's not usable for the puzzle or something? What does this mean? Can I rotate the red itself? No. Oh, this diagonal splitter. That might be useful. Do I need a green or just a yellow? Is the question. I see a yellow. I don't see a green. Hmm. So based on that, it might work, but it's diagonal. If I go this way, we hit a tree. This actually might be a place where I need to use a, a splitter. Probably that way, so that the yellow beam goes somewhere where I can use it again. The yellow beam eventually goes here. I just need to redirect it towards the white, because eventually that head needs all three colors. I see no other green, so I think I think we're good on green. So one of you somehow has to go you have to come back here for, to go into the red. And there's two reds. Hmm. What do I make of that? Okay, so can't come from this direction. There's a tree and a wall and so on. Can't come from this direction. So I think this red has to come from diagonal. Probably here. Basically. So currently this is redirecting this guy into that red and that red at the same time. While this one's redirecting a red into a third direction. Which is probably the one I need for the purple. Which is right over there. I'll just point him over there. Okay. At some point, if these get sufficiently complicated, they're probably going to feel like untangling a bunch of wires that you left in a box. <laughs> You're trying to figure out like, I don't know, okay, this one's wrapped around that and ah. Okay, so blue dead ends over here, There's n and there's no spots between here and there, so let's try you. Is there a blue spot, or is it just the purple? I'm at four out of five now. Uh, do I see a blue spot? I don't think I do. I think it's just, just supposed to go into there. Hmm. That can't be the solution though, because there's no, there is no blue, but there's also, it has to go into this white, so. What happens if I put this guy here? Doesn't line up. Hmm. I'm probably wrong about how I'm getting the blue there. I probably want to split you. Yeah. Because now this can redirect the yellow and blue into the white. And this can redirect this into the purple. Five out of five. Boom. It does feel like I'm wiring something. <laughs> Nope, nope, oh, nope. Oh. What? Was that just a door closing behind me or something? 
Or was it like an angry robot coming after me? I wasn't sure what to make of that sound. That was a little weird. 